Hey guys, what's up? Jay here. I'm back with part two of Project Skunk Works. I actually just finished up Tech Talk a little bit ago, watched a movie with the wife and the kid, and I can't go any farther with this build until I start tearing things out of the 900D. But I don't want the 900D to be down in the meantime. So what I'm going to be doing is pulling out the water cooling stuff and putting in some air cooling stuff. And then I'm going to be taking uh, one of these graphics cards up here, probably just the 760 in the meantime, and sticking that in there. Now one of the things that I'm regularly asked is how do you get the fluid out of your system? Well, my way is kind of crude. I mean, I'm not using any valves in this build like I was in Red Mist. But if you take a look down here, you can kind of see I've got this long fitting right here with this extension on it. I basically just lay this case upside down so all the air will travel to the highest point in the loop, which will be that point. And then I unscrew the fitting slowly. The air will basically be resting right here. Again, the case will be kind of upside down. And then I just screw in this hose with this fitting, which I then just stick that end in the bottle. So. It's not the best way of bleeding your system, but it does give me at least something that I can do. So tonight's plan, before we move on to some more of the build tomorrow, is we're going to pull out the graphics cards, we're going to pull out the pumps that are down there, you can't really see them, and we're going to pull out the radiators. So let's go ahead and get started. So you can see I have the case laying on its back right now, pretty much all of the air has left the reservoir. Uh, well, most of it anyway. You can kind of see that long bubble there. Most of the air is going to be sitting up here. Uh, however, there's still going to be some leakage when I undo this little fitting cap right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put some paper towels around here and then we'll open it up and see if we can't get to our uh, fitting attached right there for bleeding. And then once it's on there, I just stand it back up and everything will basically piss right on out of there. Alright, here we go. Perfect. I don't even think we lost a drop of coolant on there. See? Yep. Now all we do is go ahead and thread this bad boy in there. That will be good to go. Now for the least amount of leakage, you want to go ahead and stick the hose in the hole uh, prior to, well, you know. I'll go ahead and give you guys a little physics lesson here. You may or may not realize. Uh, nothing is actually coming out of here. Well, the reason for that is we have a sealed reservoir up top. So before anything can come out into the uh, fill or the, the bottle here, you have to allow air in. Fluid can't actually leave until we allow air in. So that's why I actually have that fitting right up there on the top. So the moment I release that little cap, everything will pretty much come rushing out. So that's how I bleed my systems. And there we go. Cap out. And now my computer is basically taking a leak. Now we're going to have to tilt it around a bit to get all the fluid out of there, but there you go. There's Jay's uh, drain lesson. How to, how to drain your tube. Yeah. Alright, there it is. We're completely bled. There's the empty system. <laughs> it's coming apart. That's okay because that one's going to be way cooler. I think what kind of sucks most though about doing these types of system swaps is there's just a very particular order that they have to happen in. I have to take things out of this system in a certain order and move them over there in a certain order so it gets a little bit hectic, especially when I don't want to be down without the system for very long. So what I'm going to do next, uh, if I can actually see the camera here, there we go, is I'm going to pull out the graphics cards pull off the uh, CPU block and get an air cooler on there and pull out the radiators and the pumps. The pumps are down in there. Not sure you can even see those, but they're down in the bottom there. And uh, we're going to get those cleaned up because these fans and this, uh, I'm going to use the top 480 actually, it's the newest radiator. Uh, these fans are really filthy. I've got to switch out the fan rings. I want to pull out the extension cables and then uh, pretty much, I think that might be as far as we get tonight. Maybe I'll get the graphics cards put in the other motherboard and we'll go from there and maybe get the 
crystal link, I, I guess we'll call it a crystal link, but it's just the acrylic tubing between the graphics cards. We'll get that uh, ready to go with the Primo Chill fittings. So let's go ahead and get that done, I guess. Enough talking. Come on, Jay. Stop talking. Do some work, would you? Well, the graphics cards are out. And the top 480 radiator's out. It's starting to look really empty inside this thing. I haven't seen it this empty in a long time. And the CPU block is off. We got our sexy Lutro Customs cables out. I never really got a chance to show the basement of this uh, setup here. So these are the two Alpha Cool D5 pumps right here. Uh, variable speed pumps and they are running in series at least in this setup they were now I anticipated doing a dual loop setup at some point that's why I got two pumps so now we'll be doing a dual loop obviously in the new build so one pump per loop but yeah this is how I had it set up down there there's the radiator there's the power supply and then there are the pumps right there so all I had to do was bring down this back panel and then I could adjust the speeds if I needed to not too shabby now you guys were probably wondering how I did the series pumps I basically took two Alpha Cool 90s and then their hardline uh, nickel plated fitting right here that you would pretty much use in between GPUs. In fact, they're the same thing I used in between these GPUs. And then they were just sitting between the pumps right there. And in fact, these can seriously just pull right on out. They're just pressure fit and O-rings. Now, somebody in Tech Talk tonight was asking quite furiously how you can attach a reservoir without drilling. Well, you can see some of the residue here from where I had the pumps mounted. These pumps were actually, as you can see, just two-sided tape down in there. This is 3M automotive tape. You can get it at Home Depot or whatever. It's very, very strong. And I used it to mount the pumps in the bottom of this case because I knew that I was going to be uh, taking these out at some point. So that's how I had these mounted. There was no drilling down here for the pumps. And since they don't move, it's not a problem. Okay, now here's something interesting I just noticed. Uh, took the top rad out, took the fans off to clean the radiator, and I want you to take a look at the, the dirt pattern. Notice how only one half of the radiator actually has a buildup of dust compared to the other half? For some reason, the 900D was choking the front half of the radiator for air, and the back half was getting all of the airflow. You can kind of see that. I'm trying to get a good angle of it, but there you go. You can see how only part of the radiator, the, the front half of it, was actually getting air. And what's interesting about that is that was the side that was closest to the motherboard tray. So I can't quite figure out why that flow characteristic seems to exist in the 900D, but this is just another valid argument for positive air pressure and why it's really important in cases. So I just figured I would point that out before I went to bed here, because uh, I was a little bit surprised by this. I was not expecting this. Very interesting. Alright, so the entire cooling system has been yanked out and you can see just how dirty my case really is. You guys seem to think I don't have dirt in my system. I don't know why that is, but look at this. This is pretty dirty. I mean the fans, ugh, that is gross. So I gotta clean all these fans. So there's the radiator and the pumps and everything. I've got the other 480 rad sitting in the sink. I had to clean that one out because it was pretty bad. But now I'm gonna clean all these fans. I'm gonna clean up my mess. And then uh, I'm going to put the stock cooler back on this thing. It's only going to need to be together for a couple of days. And then uh, that's pretty much it for tonight. We're going to clean up this mess. It's not too bad of a mess, but I got a little bit of a mess. And then we'll, we'll get some stuff done tomorrow. So until then, guys, uh, I guess we'll, it'll be only for a second for you. But for me, uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. I worked until about 3.30 in the morning prepping my system so I could start building. I mean, as you see, yesterday I took out all of the uh, stuff from the 900D and you guys were curious as to what this looks like when it's not being water cooled. Yeah, it's pretty freaking empty. <laughs> so definitely not a, an air cooling case if you ask me. But then again, I don't really feel like it's a water cooling case either considering it really sucks for airflow. There's something I wanted to talk about here in a previous video that I did. Um, actually, the previous video where I showed the radiator that was damaged. What we're looking at right here is the 480 radiator. And you guys might notice there's a lot of copper color showing in there. I just wanted to also point out that Alpha Cool only puts one very thin coat of powder coat on their radiator to keep it as efficient as possible. Uh, so that's why you see... You know, you can see kind of black on one side and copper on the other. So I just want to point that out. That is by design. But this is the 480 
versus the size of the 560. Yeah, as you can see, it is quite a bit different. Now I weighed this bad boy to see how much it weighs, and it came in at five pounds. That's five pounds of solid copper. That's a lot of weight to come crashing down on these end tanks. So yeah, but anyway, I just wanted to kind of show you a size comparison there of the 480 versus the 560. The thing is a behemoth. So let's go ahead and get the new fan rings on there. Here's the fan rings I painted in the part one. There's some of the fans there. Go ahead and get the uh, fan rings on there. One of the things I did last night that wasn't on camera was I uh, cleaned up all of my fans. You know, there's lots of dust that's built up in there. And then I also had to, uh, and I didn't record this, but I've got my Lutro Customs uh, extensions in there. I had to flip all of these. I had to unpin all of these from the connector here and flip them to the opposite sides. Now you may be wondering why. Well, the reason for that, well, I am really bright. The reason for that is uh, Lutro Customs, they know the way that they normally have to bend to kind of get around to the back of a motherboard tray. And since that's a 90 degree fitting, it's actually reverse of the way that it normally goes. Well, because they have the longer cables on one side than the other to give it that natural curve, it was naturally curving the opposite direction. So I just reversed all the pins on those and we're good to go. So now we're gonna go ahead and get the fans ready, get them mounted to the rads, get the rads in there and just kind of start fitting things to see how I want things to go. So this is the old fan ring, and this is the new fan ring. You can kind of see the difference in color there. The top one is a bit more of like a, oh, I don't know, mustard color, and the bottom one is definitely more of a bright yellow. The reason for that, if you look at the old uh, motherboard in there, you can see that's clearly not a yellow. That is definitely more of a mustard color. And uh, now that we're on the topic, let's go ahead and talk about this guy real quick. Now, you guys, or lots of you, have been asking, well, if you like yellow so much, why the heck aren't you using the M power? I'm worried that there would be too much yellow. But there's also some other reasons, is this is a, an EATX board, so it comes all the way to the end of the motherboard tray, and the M power also has green and blue LEDs on it, where this just has red LEDs. So it came down to, function of this motherboard, the fact that it can handle three and four way SLI if I ever want to get crazy, and it doesn't have the ugly uh, LEDs on there. So I've not tested the overclocking function of this motherboard. I'm really putting all of my chips in EVGA on this one that they got their act together with the BIOS. So we're just gonna see how that one turns out. But I wanted to answer why I'm not using the Empower motherboard. Now the Empower motherboard is in that system over there, doing a good job of giving me a nice solid test bench but we are going with obviously the EVGA in this bad boy for other obvious reasons. Well, maybe they're not so obvious, or you guys wouldn't have asked. Click. Click. Ta-da! Obviously I've got enough fans for push-pull on the 480. Yay! Some people have asked how the lower radiator mounts into the SMA8. Well, this bad boy pretty much is just a bracket, and you can get this for 560, 480, 360, 240, whatever size you want, and that just holds in there with these screws, and these screws go through these little holes and thread right in there. So yeah, pretty easy mounting mechanism. Just gonna set this on top of the radiator, and then we take our fans and we set these down in there, and then we screw them in like that. We pinch it in between the rad, and the fans, pretty nifty if you ask me. And the amazingly beautiful Miss J's Two Cents brought me coffee. Of course, this whole entire channel is brought to you by Starbucks. Actually, I bring them lots and lots of money. All right, so one thing I wanna talk about here which also seems to be very controversial constantly is people saying, why am I going with AF140s on the radiator, on the 560? Guys, they do not make an SP140 non-LED fan with the removable rings. I want the fans to match my SP120s over there. Yes, I am using SP120s on the 480. On the 560, this is my only option if I want matching fans. However, with the size of these fans and the fin density of this radiator, which you can look, look, you can see right through it, even with the fan there, there is not gonna be any issues with optimum airflow using an airflow fan on an 8 FPI radiator. So if you guys are gonna give me a hard time about using these AF fans on this massive radiator, 
Uh, you need to really just stop repeating everything you hear on the internet and not talking with first-hand experience because unfortunately you guys are making yourself look bad every time you bring this up. Decided to take a quick break and just enjoy some Dimitri Node 804 review, Hardware Connects. Love those guys. Push fans installed on the upper 480 rad and uh, one of the stickers came off. I might as well just take off all the rest of the stickers. These don't show anyway, but I'm going to be doing something kind of custom with the labels here. I don't like Corsair's logos being all over my build, so I'm going to be trying to use some of my 3M carbon fiber uh, sticker paper and make circular cutouts to put on top of these fans so that we can hide that Corsair logo. We don't, I don't want their logo anywhere on here. So yeah, we'll just, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll circle back to that. But now I've got the lower, hi, I've got the lower uh, rad in there, the 560. And I do like the way that the rings just sort of kind of ghost through like that. It looks really, really good. I like that. So you can see that the yellow is really starting to come together. I have no idea what I'm going to do next, honestly. I'm, just got a mess here, and I guess we're going to figure out what's next. Heat tools, ugly carpet. Oh, and there's the EK480 rad. Had to use the hardware from that one because all of the hardware that came with my AlphaCool rads was copper. And unfortunately, copper just does not look good with this build. So you can see I used the black screws from the EK rad right there. Um, just had that EK rad left over from Red Mist. In fact, that buyer still needs to decide what he wants to do with that rad because it's just sitting here. Well, you know, I was just thinking to myself, man, so far I haven't run into any issues. Uh, pretty simple build so far. And of course, I jinxed myself. Now, this may seem hard to believe, guys, but here is the thickness with push-pull on an XT45. Uh, push-pull on an XT45 does not fit in this case. Let's see if you can actually see that right there. Probably not. It is actually hitting on the memory modules right there, as well as the CPU power. Ah, let me get the brightness brighter. So you can see right there, it's hitting on the CPU power and it's hitting on the memory modules. So unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to do push-pull with the fans on the inside. Now I would have loved to have just said, well, some of you guys may be thinking, okay, fine, put the, the red up against the top, put the fans in the bottom, and put the other fans on the top like this exhausting air. Well, I would do that. However, I went with the standard thickness top, which does not, as you can see, it does not fit. So, had I gotten the thicker top piece, I would have been able to do push-pull like this, but you know what? Red Mist didn't have push-pull and it wasn't an issue, so I think we'll be okay. It's just kind of sad now that I'm gonna have four SP120 sitting there doing absolutely nothing. Maybe I'll maybe I'll, I'll get a thicker top later and put the fans up here. Oh well, that's a little disappointing. Snag number one, no push-pull on this bad boy. But again, low FPI, only eight FPI in this radiator, so these fans, even while slowed down, move plenty of air through the rads. In fact, I didn't do push-pull in that thing, so I don't technically need it here either. I just kind of wanted to do it because I had the fans. Now I'm sad. All right, so there's the top rad. Like I said, no push-pull. But man, the yellow is really starting to come in on this build. This is going to look really fantastic. You can see I got the top uh, EPS power going up there, the 24 pin. And uh, you can see that the wiring is going to be very, very, very tidy on this build. So I got to decide how I'm going to do the reservoirs now. That always seems to be the thing that hangs me up on these builds is how I want to do the reservoirs. But I'm pretty sure it's just going to be boring, mounted to the back wall, nothing custom. But uh, the, you can really see. I, I was worried about the yellow and the gunmetal, but the more I put in there and the more the, the yellow is just sort of accent, it looks really good. Now, again, that's why I didn't put the M power in there. I think it would have been a little bit overpowering on the yellow, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, there was definitely an intended pun in there. And here's what it looks like without the cover on the bottom. Uh, one of the things that kind of sucks though is you can see that, let's see if I get this in focus here. I hate this manual focus crap. You can see that I have this gap right here and that the whole bracket I'm using the lowest holes on here and the reason for that is when I drilled the pass through and the 90 degree fitting that comes through the floor here for the graphics cards, 
it collides with the radiator if it's up any higher. I learned that with red mist. I would love for this to be centered, but I'm not going to be able to because of the 90 degree fitting on there. But it's starting to come together now. I don't have a whole lot left to do today. I'm going to get the graphics cards on there. And then what's going to be the next step pretty much is going to you know, obviously get all the water cooling plumbed up. And then, well, shoot, I guess you'll be pretty much done. Well, it sounds like it's right around the corner, but there's actually a lot left to do. So actually, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make the pass-through right here. Uh, it's got this grommet cover, if you will. It's just a hard cover there. And instead of running the wires down through here like I did for Red Mist, I'm going to just drill a hole in this and run them through there. Now the way you get a nice perfectly centered hole is you take your, you take your punch right here. This is just an all, like a punch. A spring-loaded one. You can see I've already put the hole in there, but you find center. You take your awl and find the hole. Oh shit. Find the hole. Story of my life. Push it down. Spring load pops a hole in there. You take your pilot bit. You drill a small hole in there. And then you take a unit bit and then you make the hole the size you need it to be. It just needs to be big enough for the uh, three pin fan connectors to fit through. So let's go ahead and get that out of the way. All right, and there's our hole. I even countersunk it a little bit so it looks better and uh, should be the right size. Let's go ahead and try it out. So all three fans are just running through there right now and you're not even gonna be able to really notice that once the reservoirs and stuff are in there. So it's a lot easier for me to wire those up that way than running them all the way down to the bottom like I did in Red Mist. I learned a lot of things with Red Mist though since I'm working with the same case and I'm kind of, this is almost like Red Mist 2.0 if you will, but uh, yeah. So we're starting to wrap, wrap it up for the day. We'll see what else we get done here and then we'll, we'll call it a day. Okay, I've got the two GTX 780s that are hacked and overclocked and BIOS overvolted and all that crap uh, in there. But I still have to do the connections between them. And then all of this has to come back out actually, the motherboard tray and, and all of that. Because I still have to mark down here where I need to drill the holes and decide exactly where I'm going to be drilling the holes and decide how I'm going to be doing this. I'm thinking I'm going to do in and out. It's going to be a parallel loop. It's going to go in, pass through, go through there, and then back out. So I think I'm going to have it go in and out right here on the bottom rather than how I did Red Mist where I had that one tube that went along the bottom. I think I'm going to do it that way. But all I'm going to do for right now is get the link in the middle ready to go, get those uh, acrylic tubes cut to length, and then I think that's where we're going to stop for today. All right, we're wrapping it up here. I just want to show you one last tip since people are always asking me when I'm doing these pass-through fittings like this that go into this floor, how do I know where to drill? We can say I've already got one hole marked. But the question people ask is how do you know where to drill? Because, you know, it could be slightly off or whatever. Well, this is the method that I use. I take my iPhone, I turn on the flashlight, and I make sure that the top port plug is open and that the, uh, where's the focus? Jesus, vlogging with a DSLR kind of sucks. All right, so I make sure that it's open all the way through. I take my flashlight and I shine it in the hole on the top. And as you can see down on the floor, I get all these different rings of things happening. But if you focus the camera better, you can see that there's gonna be one point where they all pretty much line up perfectly, which is right there. So you make sure that it lines up perfectly all around. Same amount of gap there. And if you have the tube in between, it gives this nice shimmer effect, which gives you an even better way of telling if it's centered. What do you find where it's centered? You take your awl or your punch, and uh, you, well, it's gonna be loud. Cover your ears. There's your hole punch. And there are your marks to take, once again, your pilot bit drill the pilot, take your unit bit, drill it, and there you go. It'll be perfectly lined up with the entire unit. So there you go guys, that was part two of Jay's Project Skunk Works. I wanted to get farther today, but I actually got quite a bit done. Uh, I spent a few hours on it today, but a lot of time just kind of looking and brainstorming. As you guys know, when I do these builds, I talk about always planning and prepping and thinking three, four, five times about it, measuring three, four, five times, and then doing the work once. So that's what I recommend. So I'm going to get on out of here, guys. It is 4th of July. We're going to go see some fireworks and stuff tonight. And uh, from then, we're going to go ahead and see if we can't finish this build up this weekend. And as always, guys, I will see you in the next one.